Good morning, Zion. Welcome home. You belong here. We belong together. I'm Pastor Dwayne Jesse, pastor at Zion Lutheran Church in Youngstown, Ohio, and today we are observing the fifth Sunday in Lent. Zion Lutheran Church is hosting live in-person corporate worship, and I want you to feel welcome to join us at either our blended service on Saturday at 5 p.m. or our traditional Lutheran liturgical service on Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Our theme for this Lenten season has been help in the desert, and I have been bringing real, practical help and hope through our Wednesday evening midweek offerings. Each Wednesday of Lent, we have been hosting a program of visiting professionals on issues of mental health during and hopefully coming out of the COVID pandemic. Those services will be live in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays and will be recorded and saved on our YouTube channel for your viewing convenience. This Wednesday is the last in the series and the subject will be the pandemic and the elderly. Our Holy Week schedule is the same as it has been the last couple of years. Holy Thursday worship service is on Thursday, April the 14th at 7 p.m. Good Friday service will be virtually only and will be available for your viewing convenience on Friday, April the 15th. And then we will celebrate the resurrection of our Lord on Saturday, April the 16th at 5 p.m., and on Sunday, April the 17th at 8 a.m., 9.30 a.m., and 11 a.m. No reservations are required. I want to thank you for your continued financial faithfulness. Holy Thursday offerings are designated to go to the ELCA World Hunger Campaign. Good Friday offerings are designated to Protestant Family Services. To make a special offering or to contribute your regular tithes and offerings, we suggest using the zionohio.org website and click on the Give tab, or you can use this handy QR code in the lower corner of your screen. Just point the camera of your smartphone at it, and it will direct you to the zionohio.org website Give tab. You can use the Give Plus smartphone app, and you can reach us by the U.S. mail. Assisting in worship today are Joan Gent, our Administrator of Worship and Music, on the keyboards. Stephanie Chismar and Dan Mook will be leading us in our singing and providing special music. Lisa Bellin will be leading us in our prayers of intercession. Kari Wentz, our Administrator of Communications, produced this video. Eric Vargo edited this video. And Stephanie Chismar, our Director of Choirs, edited the music. During the season of Lent, we begin our worship with confession and forgiveness. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us in our pilgrimage, amen. Let us pray. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises, we have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us, forgive us, and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. The word draws near to us, and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to us again and again and gathers us under wings of love. In Jesus' name, our sins are forgiven. God journeys with us and teaches us how to live in love. Amen. Now join in singing our gathering song.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him, Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who would betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Is Jesus unconcerned about the poor? Those of us who express our piety through concern for the poor might be asking. Let's take a deeper look. The Gospel for today does not come from Luke as it has throughout Lent, but rather jumps to the Gospel of John, chapter 12. In it, we find Jesus in Bethany, a little suburban town on the outskirts of Jerusalem. It was just a few days before the Passover, and so Jews from all over the known world had made pilgrimage to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover there. They had heard about this itinerant prophet and miracle worker named Jesus, and most recently they had heard about his miraculous raising of a dead man to life, a man named Lazarus, who lived in Bethany. Although this was a chapter ago, according to John's Gospel, we didn't hear this story during Lent. At the time of today's gospel reading, Jesus, along with his disciples, was reuniting with that very same Lazarus and his sisters, Mary and Martha, at their home. While they were there, an emotional Mary inappropriately entered the room, interrupted the men, anointed Jesus' feet with a pound, a pound of very expensive perfume, and wiped them with her feet. John recorded that Judas Iscariot, whom he added was a thief and a betrayer, raised the issue of the inappropriate waste of resources in anointing Jesus' feet with this expensive perfume. The issue, of course, was that this was extravagant. This perfume, cost the equivalent of a year's wages, could have been spared and the money given to the poor. Imagine, Jesus, how much good could have been done if that much money could have been used to do ministry. And as I said in the beginning, Jesus' response may be concerning to some. He said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. What are we to make of Jesus' comments? Well, Jesus told the others to leave her alone because Mary was preparing his body for burial. How could Mary have known about what was ahead for her Lord? Jesus was obviously honored by Mary's humble act of devotion. Let us remember that Jesus had that uncanny ability to see through a person's exterior and see the condition of their heart. 
I believe that in Mary, Jesus saw genuine appreciation from a woman who was totally devoted to him. The act of anointing Jesus, when taken in its literal and cultural context, display Mary's utter devotion to Jesus following the raising of her brother Lazarus from the dead. The ointment that she used was very expensive. And since there is no indication that Mary belonged to a wealthier class, after all, the meal was being served by Martha rather than a servant, the ointment would have been a major expenditure. Furthermore, dignified, observant Jewish women were forbidden to cut their hair. They were also forbidden to let it show except in the presence of their husbands because well-kept hair was and still is considered one of a woman's charms. So you see, it was significant that Mary inappropriately entered and interrupted a room full of men, let down her hair, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. In this very demonstrative way, Mary humbly acknowledged that he, Jesus, was her Lord and she was his humble disciple. Today, in our Me Too, hypersensitive cancel culture, we might look down on Mary like Judas did, but perhaps with different questions. Why are you humbling yourself at the feet of Jesus among a room full of men? Don't you have any self-respect? But notice that Jesus allowed it. That is because in Mary, Jesus saw someone who understood who he is. She was expressing her heartfelt appreciation. Yes, Jesus had just brought her dead brother back to life, the sole source of her and her sister's support in life. There, were probably, there was probably some of that, but I suspect more than that, I think that Mary saw that in the raising of her brother from the dead, Jesus has the power over life and death, and she believed that he was the Messiah and that, sh that she and all Israel had been waiting for. By the way, Messiah literally means anointed one. So perhaps for her, the only appropriate response to her revelation was to anoint him. I'd like to that, return to that question that I posed at the beginning of the sermon. Is Jesus unconcerned about the poor? Well, this story indicates that Jesus welcomes worship in whatever way we can offer it. You know, we're all gifted differently, so it only makes sense that our heartfelt worship, devotion, and lives of discipleship might look different, too. Some are wealthier than others, and it may be their gift to offer gobs of money to ministry. God revealed in Jesus Christ will bless them for that. Others may be crafty and worship God by putting their talents to use in crafting pieces of furniture to be used to lead worship and make banners and singing in the choir, God revealed in Jesus Christ will bless them for that. Still others worship God by teaching the faith to children, leading adult Bible studies, or facilitating our worship by serving as altar care ushers, participants in leading worship, and so on. God revealed in Jesus Christ, bless them for that. Still others are motivated to worship God by performing acts of mercy, inspiring fellow Christians to collect and assemble health kits, funding camp scholarships, organizing our food distribution ministry, and handing out food, and doing God's work with our hands, making a difference in the lives of our neighbors. God revealed in Jesus Christ will bless them for that. Out of the creativity of God, we are all created with different gifts and abilities and interests, and each of us can and should use them in ways that will worship and honor God revealed in Jesus Christ. Not one is more important than another. All are important and necessary. 
When I walk into this beautiful sanctuary, I am inspired by the beauty of the exposed brick, the intricate carvings of our pulpit and altar, lectern and font, and it reminds me of the holiness of this place. I hope it does that for you too. It often inspires others whom I have given tours to. Jesus isn't saying that extravagant forms of worship are better and we should not worry about the poor. He's simply saying, worship God revealed in me in whatever way you are led to, for I see your heart and I will bless you for the integrity of your worship. So worship God in whatever way you are able. I believe that God revealed in Jesus Christ will bless you for it. Back to the scene that is our gospel reading. Imagine being in Mary's humble home with Jesus. She enters the room with a pound of expensive perfume and breaks open the jar and uses it to anoint Jesus' feet. Mmm, can you smell that? Of all the ways that she could worship Jesus, this is the way that she chose and Jesus honored her offering. I think we can learn from this story is that however we choose to worship, worshiping Jesus is always the better choice. Let me remind you of what happens next. According to John's gospel, the very next event that takes place is Palm Sunday. What a coincidence. We celebrate Palm Sunday next Sunday too. And then everything goes badly for Jesus. But as we will discover, he would have it no other way. He is focused on the cross, then the grave, and then resurrection. Can you smell it already? What is that smell? That is the sweet smell of salvation that we will smell when we enter this house of worship on Easter Sunday to celebrate his resurrection and our salvation. Let us pray. Life-giving Jesus, why is it that you love us as you do? Even when we are trying to be Christian, we can misunderstand the motives of one another and claim our form of worship is better than another. Forgive us for judging others. Help us to focus on our motivations and inspire us that all we do in your name is sincere, heartfelt worship that blesses you, for you are always the better choice. It is in your name that we pray. Amen.
Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the world and all who are in need. Let us pray. Do a new thing in the church. Free us from paradigms that no longer serve the gospel and bring forward leaders who imagine fresh ways of doing ministry. Give us courage in the face of change. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing for creation. Reverse the trajectory of climate change and environmental catastrophe. Revive habitats already impaired by human disregard. Amplify the voices of climate scientists and researchers working to chart a new course. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our world. Break barriers that prevent political enemies from working together for the well-being of all. Make a way for peace and collaboration among the nations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing for those who suffer. Reveal a path for any who are unemployed or underemployed. For those experiencing homelessness and for all who struggle with money. Comfort those who grieve and restore those who are sick, especially those on our prayer list, our homebound, and those we now name before you either silently or aloud. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing within us. Direct us into encounters that broaden our understanding of the human experience. Amplify voices that are ignored or devalued. Deliver us especially from the scourge of racism. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Do a new thing in our death. Fill us with the knowledge of Christ and the power of his resurrection as we give thanks for all the saints who have attained the prize of their heavenly call. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Return to the Lord your God, for God is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and abounding in steadfast Let us pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven, give us to Those 
Now please join in singing our sending song. We are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, majestic and mighty, bless us this day and always. You belong here. We belong together. Go in peace. Jesus meets us on the way. Thanks be to God.